Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today I'm super excited. I have Juliet Berlin, the medicine woman, the modern medicine woman, and we're going to talk about so much different stuff. And I'm just so honored. So welcome. I'm so honored myself. I've been your fan for years and years, glued to your channel, learned so much from you. I'm so super excited to be here with you. I am super honored that you would say such a thing. I just, I just finished your amazing book, uh, you. The Modern Medicine Woman. And The Modern Medicine Woman is this story, a personal story, a journey that you had with your mentor and the medicine that you used. And then it becomes something else, a, an amazing cookbook. Um, your story about uh, how to use keto and, and how food is medicine and some amazing yeah, recipes, awesome. by the way. The Menemon is great. I actually uh, tried to almost got to it. Very, very good. There's some great recipes in there. So I don't even know where to start. Tell me a little bit about your story. Before the book, it says it was complicated and you were struggling. When you went to Rhythmia and you had this transformation with the Yaje, is that how it's pronounced? The Yaje yeah, medicine? Yaje. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that a little bit more. Um, I can go a little bit before why I was looking for this kind of healing. Well, I was always, I always knew there's more than what I see and what I um, have around me. Like, entering the subconscious there's this routine life i live day to day and i cannot seem to change it i feel like i'm meeting the same people with different names different faces i'm always making the same money you talk about this a lot on your channel too like how we can create and i really hit the wall i just got stuck i'm like super desperate to change but i just didn't know what to do and I find out about plant medicine and it's just a tool for us to uh, enter our blueprint so we can do the change there because there's a spirit, spirit world and there's the 3D world that we exist as humans. So um, when I find out about this tool, I'm like, sign me up, I'm all in. And I went to Rhythmia and it was the can of worm just open because this healing doesn't happen overnight because obviously you took all your life to create this um, routine life or the life that you your parents lived or it's just your DNA. So it took a, it took a while for me to finally change it. Uh, I started at Rhythmia and then I haven't stopped yet. It's been almost five years now. Uh, I work with Taito Juanito. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, a, he's a Taito from an Inga tribe in Colombia. He uh, trains with one kind of ayahuasca it's named yahe we call it yahe ayahuasca yeah. has a lot of different names like god has a lot of different names right. um so i just connected with the medicine and i've been with the medicine and i uh, work with the medicine i'm a city girl the reason i called my book the modern medicine woman because there's this norm out there if you're doing like a ceo world or or businessman or whatever it's kind of you can't do the spiritual work but i kind of figured out how to mix the both mm -hmm. i live in the city i go to the jungle i go to the jungle i go back to the city and just function um because now i have power to create my own reality right and i know you're huge on that so i wanted to ask you in particular about your first experience with ayahuasca mm -hmm. and your relationship with it in my own experience it's a living being it's a living being that is like you're kind of getting into a relationship slowly. They're teaching you and unraveling, but it, it's a it's a realization that you're interacting with a living being that is showing you something. Does does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So what happens <laughs> is we have a conscious mind mm -hmm. and we have the unconscious mind. We call it the subconscious. And usually the conscious mind gives the order to subconscious and subconscious mm -hmm. delivers because right that's its job and our brain is made to keep us safe it's a survival mechanism and it's millions of years old so when you drink medicine what happens is it puts your conscious mind to sleep kind of the chatter mm -hmm. stops then you can finally hear your soul you can finally access to your subconscious and see what your programming is 
where you're coming from because the medicine is there just to remind you who you are. We are already perfect. Right. We don't need healing. We don't need learning. We just need to remember. So the two plants mix. One of them is a bark. The other one is a leaf. One of them has an enzyme. The other one has the DMT. Without each other, they don't activate. Right. So uh, when you drink this medicine, you enter into your subconscious uh, mind, which opens you to the spirit world because plants have spirit. Everything around you has spirit, mm -hmm. right? Uh, right? Even the table you're sitting on, it's illusion, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So um, when you have, when you quiet your conscious mind, and you connect with your subconscious, now you have access to the spirit world. Now you can have a conversation. Now you can ask questions. Um, when you're purging, when you're going through a hard journey, you can actually ask, what am I purging? She'll answer you. I say right. she, because it's a Pachamama, it's the mother earth. Right. Uh, this is my experience, but everyone who drinks um, ayahuasca will tell you the same. God is a woman. It's the creator. It's it's the planet Earth. It's it's everything you see around you, the trees, the, the grass, the everything. So when she starts communicating with you, um, she's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. You never get what you want. You get what you need because exactly. there are things in your subconscious. You have no recollection of how you actually downloaded those programming. I had a recently um, journey in the Amazon. I was just in the Amazon mm -hmm. and I was going through a, such a hard journey and she took me to my two-year-old self. I have no recollection of my two-year-old self. I don't even remember when I right. was three Most and I life. saw my parents were fighting and they got divorced and I grew up with my stepfather. I didn't even know my father was my father. I, my parents never told me. Um, so I have no drama i have no problems i have no daddy issues but i always sabotage my relationships mm -hmm. i always left the guy before because deep down apparently oh you're gonna leave me so i'm gonna leave you first but this was coming from my subconscious just because my brain is trying to protect me from a future event that it may hurt me mm -hmm. i may get heartbroken because when that happened my parents were fighting in front of me. I watched the whole thing. I had a bottle and I then recorded that event as, oh my God, my dad doesn't love me. It's my fault. He left. Mm. So medicine gives you the tools to access to your, even before birth. I had a ceremony where I actually had to heal my mother and I was in the womb. Mm -hmm. oh, um, wow. You, you carry six generation of mom, six generation of dad mm -hmm. lineage in your DNA. Sometimes you'll drink, you go to sleep, you don't know what's happening. It's always working. Um, you may have um, nothing. You may have consultation, which she will talk to you. You may have visions, which she will show you. And you may have all of them. So when you have nothing, usually she's going all the way back to the origin where you weren't even in the plans or in nothing right. but she starts cleaning your back end from that point from the beginning because actually there's no beginning and end we don't yeah we're just infinite mm -hmm. so she will go all the way back to clean all the pipeline so you can heal whatever is happening right now in your life so you can fix it so you start you start with a clean slate medicine only gives you a clean slate the rest is up to you Right. That's why my teacher says medicine does the 50% of the work. The other 50 is up to you, which is integration. If you're not listening to Brian Scott's YouTube channel, if you're not meditating, if you're not uh, educating yourself on like Neville Goddard is one of my like amazing teachers, you know, mm -hmm. I know yours too. I learned so much from him and he talks about this. Even Wayne Dyer, uh, Abraham Hicks, all these people are, talking about how we can integrate once we know the problem how can you fix it mm -hmm. so um i feel medicine it just takes you there to clean the pipeline so you can start building your life the way you want it because you're the director right you write your own script and it's... everything we see in the eyes 
the reason we close our eyes when we meditate because front of the eye it's like a lens think of uh, you're watching a movie it's mm -hmm. you scripted it and the people in your life are the uh, players the minute you close you don't see that you go in yeah so, so these are all tools it's just available for everybody and and i'm excited to see the day when it's more legalized and it's in, in a modern environment, like, you know, it doesn't necessarily always have to be done in a natural environment. If, if it's with the right people, I believe in the future, we can do it, you know, in a We're modern environment with virtual reality and other things, right? Um, we don't work, not to separate ourselves, right? But I think that's going to happen in the future. At least uh, I hope I so. I feel right now, especially after this COVID, I feel, I see also around me and in the world, a lot of people are, I don't want to say waking up. A lot of people are realizing they have actually power to mm -hmm. decide for themselves, for their health. Uh, you don't need, I'm not against Western medicine, don't get me wrong, but you don't need to take a pill every day to be happy. It's true. And we get that habit. The doctor says, hey, if you just take this, you're a little depressed. I'll just give you this uh, pill that you can take every day. Because you're so used to giving others it, the responsibility. Right. Because most of us always, um, depending on other people, oh, if my doctor said that's, that's, that's his word, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to follow his word. Why did you ask your heart? So medicine mm -hmm. is the most important thing brings you to your heart. You right. operate from this. And your intuition is your soul talking to you. So I love that. don't ever dismiss your hunches because they're never wrong. But then your mind will come in, especially the mind doesn't like changes because it likes routine and wants to keep you safe. Uh, if you want to take risks or write a book or bungee jump or get married to the love of your life, but that person is not right on the book. She's not your religion. She's not the type that you love, but your heart is follow that. Follow that heart. And that's what you talk about in your third chapter. You talk about creating. And uh, it's a really good chapter. I recommend anybody that's interested in creating reality to go to that chapter for sure. And I wanted to get some personal stories from you when you first started to realize your power to create reality and you know what, how that has affected you and you know how maybe you've even taught that to others. Because uh, it's a little bit different for everybody. It's, for everybody, it's their own sort of science that they're learning on their own, if that makes sense, right? My life, um, I'm a great manifester. But all my life, I did it on default. Um, if universe is the mirror, meaning it only gives you what you are, not what you want, right? Mm -hmm. Because we vibrate. And what's your vibration? I want a car. And universe is going to come back to you and say, I want a car. And you're going to stay on that wanting stage. But what if you go to the next stage, you already have the car. How do you feel? You already have the money. You already have the marriage that you want. You already have the promotion that you want. How do you feel? Creating starts when you go to one step forward and you celebrate. Because the minute you start celebrating, universe is looking at you, oh, she already has it. Therefore, mm -hmm. that it's going to give you. It's I so always true. remind myself uh especially front of the mirror i actually have a sticker it says i can have anything i want period period and if you focus on that i can have anything i want imagine there is no limit to your money imagine there's no limit to your superpowers because we all are superhumans you know True. Most people we are miracles like you say yes so if you have the mentality, I can have anything I want, what's stopping you? You. Mm -hmm. So I think the creation starts when you go to the next stage after having it. Actually, Neville Goddard, I'm going to go back to him again. Um, he talks about imagination, mm -hmm. right? right? And he says, when you go to bed or when you wake up, because your brain is super susceptible to um, new ideas, and your brain, your body doesn't have a mind, so it 
whatever you feel, you will get. Exactly. So, because universe gives you what you are. So front of a mirror, if, if you're going to front of a mirror, look at yourself, you smile, the mirror smiles back. You're crying, you, so that's universe. Right. That's my everyday reminder. I'm like, okay, how am I showing up today? Because if I'm shitty, I'm going to get a shitty day. And I don't want a shitty day. You make that decision right there and then. Yeah. And the thing that people don't realize is that somebody like you that teaches this, it still happens all the time. We, it, it's still an <laughs> ongoing learning experience because you, you can wake up and stub your toe or uh, you, know, get, you look at your phone at the wrong time and then it can just affect the whole day. You know? um, yeah, they talk about the morning ritual. I used to be like that, check yeah. my phone immediately. Mm -hmm right now i give myself one hour one hour is perfect and, yeah. and it took me a really good three months to get used to this because it's such a habit it is yeah. more than 21 days uh i'm like oh shit i'm not gonna do that you know i keep my phone on airplane right my kids are home they woke up i woke up life is good and i'm gonna stay in this vibration i'm gonna go make my coffee I'm going to maybe put a nice music and light an incense, smell something nice. It, these are all Ayurvedic teaching, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just you, you make your soul happy. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, go back to your phone. It's the best advice that I've ever been given. It just give yourself some time in the morning where you don't look at your phone and you don't look even at TV or the computer or anything. Right. Nothing electronic. My actually, I turn my uh, router off. I don't sleep with Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, also, how you went to bed, because if you went to bed worrying about your bills or worrying about your relationship, you're gonna wake up continuum because all mm -hmm. night you're marinating in that. All night. So, Naveel always tells, you know, imagination, as mm -hmm. if it's already done. I have yeah. a one. I have a page in my book empty. It just says it's done. If it's I love done, that. don't talk about it. Exactly. I'm going to get a tattoo. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> That's my. a great idea. It's, a, it's, it, it's that reminder. Because uh, it's so easy to separate yourself and look at something as if it, it's in the future. And you hope for it. And you expect it. And, but you to keep yourself in the moment where you're imagining it in the moment, it's harder than people think. I think it is. I think that uh, people are, are so used to thinking outside of those realms that they, to be truly creative, seeing from your eyes in the moment as if it's true and to feel what would really feel like, it, it, it takes a little bit of learning to become an actor almost, a really good actor in the moment it all the time. It five years. <laughs> yeah. Five years constantly working with the medicine. Thank God for it. I'm so grateful whoever... I'm so grateful for Taito Juanito for bringing to the white people because indigenous people, they don't serve right. people like us. It's against the tradition, but he had a message when he was nine because he's an 11th generation Taita. He, he is not a Taita from Washington. He was Joe and then become a Taita. He's a real Taita, right. <laughs> um, you know? So I'm so grateful that he decided to bring this to us and so we can use these tools and um, I'm learning so much. I'm going to give you one example. One of my journeys, mm -hmm. I had over hundred ceremonies, by the way, this is like now my lifestyle. Now, when I go in, I have a conversation mm -hmm. with, the, with the mama. Exactly. And I have, I'm very stubborn. Uh, I'm very organized. I keep everything always the same. That's why change is not easy for me because right. I, I doubt myself. Am I doing the right thing? It took me a really long time to just follow my hunches. I'm not perfect, yeah. but I'm aiming for it. So I was in the ceremony and I was having financial issues. I'm a single mom of two. I have no help. I'm just working, working, working constantly. Very masculine energy, mm -hmm. always surviving. I'm sure there's a million single moms out there feeling the same. And in the ceremony, I'm like, okay. Like, I really need help here. What do I do? What am I doing wrong? She said, she took me to an ocean. We're sitting. She said, look, what do you see? I see a lot of water. So if you go to the ocean, take a syringe with you or a Mack truck. Do you think if you go with the Mack truck, will it lessen? Like, of course not. 
that's universe that's infinite abundance available for all of us i said oh yeah yeah i know i read so many books on that i already right. know she's like oh my god she yeah she, she even give up on me sometimes <laughs> i'm sitting on the sand she says grab sand and it's in my hand she said count it i'm like what she said count the sand I'm like, i can't count it she said whoever and whatever created that is created you that's unlimited you are unlimited you're the only one who's putting the ceiling what if there was no limit to what you can have do what would you do what would, how would you feel you're the only one who's stopping you from you ever since then i had the light bulb go on now i'm like i never talk about my bills i never even um think about them for me it's already done it's already paid and that's an am everybody that's watching this podcast right now has had that same moment where you have those fears that come up how am i going to pay my bills and those are the moments when you can remember your particular lesson that it's there's this sort of abundance that we have that we don't see that's so massive so amazing i love that vision that you had i love that the oh, whole experience if, if, when you go there yeah oh my God, i have i have hundred thousand dollars in debt right desperate you don't know you don't know how you're going to pay you immediately need you need to be aware mm -hmm. that you're thinking that that's where it becomes consciousness right you need to be conscious about your thoughts the minute you feel like okay i went there again you're going to say to yourself ask yourself juliet what if all your bills were paid and you had no debt how would you feel right now and stay there for a little bit i swear to god you're mm -hmm. going to get little bubbles here the butterflies mm -hmm. and then you're going to start spending money oh my god i will buy a land there i will build this place there i'm going to change my car that's where because now you went to the next stage of having it mm -hmm. so if you already have it you don't talk about it right it's so, such a powerful truth it's, uh because you get people that that are imagining but they're still talking about it um and if you had it already you in, in the ongoing moment you wouldn't be talking about it it would not even come up it's the last thing on your mind so you're celebrating now right you're, you're you already have it it's done but so it, it takes work the it question like work. you brought up neville goddard makes me wonder about a medicine it, he he always said you know do it when you're falling asleep and part of that for me is that's when you can communicate with your subconscious right so when you're doing the medicine you're communicating with your subconscious but on a different level can you manifest from the medicine does that make sense absolutely you know medicine scientifically changes your neural connections mm -hmm. that's why people stop drinking overnight or it heals traumas it will it heals cancer because where does cancer come from this ease it's the energy blockages a lot of resentment resentment creates cancer because right. energy is not flowing so when you drink medicine you have new neural pathways it's um, it does that scientifically but since your conscious mind is asleep we call it the celestial drunkness we're kind of you're you're super aware of everything you're not drunk but right. your mind is so quiet down we're gonna all of a sudden you're gonna start hearing your heart because your subconscious communicates with you through your heart, through your feelings. Um, there you can actually request and she will tell you exactly what you need to do. Do you, can you imagine? It's harder to imagine in that she state for me. You. You're asking a question, right? You ask whatever you ask, she's gonna show you, she's gonna talk to you, she's gonna give you ideas. That's why mm -hmm. we always recommend to have notebook. Right. Um, that's also what we recommend integration is so important and coming out of ceremony we don't recommend sharing your journeys with um, a lot of people who are mm -hmm. in there. we always try to keep it collective consciousness together stay in your group because the minute you talk about it to the outsiders first of all it dilutes the energy mm -hmm. yeah yeah also you get doubts from other people because other people didn't go where you just went they can't even imagine it. 
So why try to explain them? Right. You know, you don't need to prove anything to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, um, keep it to yourself. Journal and really close your eye and go there, because everything happens when you close and go in. Right. So, you know, my first real experiences, and it's different for everybody, was, was LSD when I was, you know, going through college. It's such a different experience. People say that ayahuasca is a psychedelic, and I don't think it is. It's something different. It's not like mushrooms or LSD. It's a sort of living plant that's different. I wanted to get, if you've experienced any other psychedelics and what you're, how you would calculate the differences between those. Because uh, LSD was very transformational for me. That's where I first was viscerally aware of the oneness where i could see that everything was one and i could separate my ego and i could and and i had a sort of understanding of the vibrations of things um and then you know for some people they they have amazing experiences with psilocybin and when they it, but for me that's more of a body i feel good i'm happy um and so people try to say oh yeah i don't need to do ayahuasca i've already done lsd i don't think i think they're completely different it's Can you every medicine that? is uh, different yeah um every medicine has a spirit it's different kind of spirits we don't mix different it spirit yeah yes you're working with different spirit you're working with different companies <laughs> right okay that Mushroom makes a lot of sense give you bodily reactions and you're you will hallucinate but you will not necessarily have healing, physical healing, mm -hmm. or you will not necessarily clear trauma. You will not necessarily clear ancestral trauma. Right. Yahe is full on. You go in, you have 20 years of therapy, therapy in one night. Amazing. She's going to clean all the way back. Right. Because... So you have a ceremony. You 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 still are doing um, events in arrhythmia. I think you're. I don't do one. events in arrhythmia. I, that was my first place to go. That was the first place. But you have an I event that you're doing in November. Uh, I work with Taito Juanito uh -huh. in Pita Ambivasi in Colombia. Oh, okay. I have so, an event in Amazon December one to twelve. This coming up. <laughs> uh, only fifteen people. Half of it already is gone. So if anyone wants to go, please connect with me on my Instagram. They can um, message me on Juliet Berlin. That's my Instagram handle. Super easy. I need to talk to them to see where they are because we don't just take just anyone. Right. It's a very small container. I, I want to make sure you're mentally and physically ready. And also if you're on any kind of medication, you cannot drink medicine because it will, um, it will stop the medicine from working, especially if you are on any kind of antidepressant because it's your brain chemicals, right. uh, you know, um, so you want to be as clean as possible. And there's a certain diet that we follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything I wrote in my book, I actually lived that, like that. I mean, I, I walk the walk. I'm very proud of myself. Um, I'm, I'm not, I never really drink. I'm not, I'm not against it. I mean, I can have it here and there, but it's not my thing. I don't do any drugs. I really don't need it. I'm always right. high anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy. I'm happy to be alive. Life is such a gift and being a human is so fun. Exactly. Well, that's very tempting. I mean, I, that sounds tempting to me because um, it would be an honor to to meet um, Taito Juanita from your book. And um, that uh, he, he you were looking for him in the book and he had carried your suitcase in already. Like he had, you didn't even see he's it. Like the humblest person you can right. ever meet. That is amazing. Zero ego. He is like the modern day Jesus. He's just like this kid. Right. But when he drinks medicine, he's the boss. I saw his real office. He works with the spirit. Wow. And so when you have consultation with him, you're going to say, Oh, I want to fix my marriage. I want to make money. He's going to say, Okay, we'll organize it tonight. He's never going to give you an answer when he's not with the medicine, because when he's with the medicine, he meets with the spirits. Mm -hmm. He organizes, he tells the spirit exactly what to do. That's why it's so important who you're drinking this medicine with. It's like having a brain surgery mm -hmm. and you want a doctor in your operation room. I don't want anyone to take this lightly and drink medicine on Hollywood Hills somewhere with Mark right. from Chicago, who just get the ayahuasca from FedEx. Right. 
That's you're what's going to start happening. We're going to start seeing stories it's of this happening. happening. Right? Yeah. It's already happening and it's hurting a lot of people because when you're in the journey and you, you um, hit a roadblock, mm -hmm. I tell you, the person who can actually help you get out of there, if the person is not well equipped, you can actually get stuck. Right. And you'll come out and you'll still feel something is not right. Like you will mess with your life. This is not a joke. It's not and a joke. It's, go, no. It's you're not playing. something that you just do, right? Yeah. Take it super no. seriously. Anybody super that's serious. watching this. Yeah. If you Where can, did your medicine come from? What was that? Where did your medicine come from? Who's the medicine? It? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Where the medicine growing? Kaita grows his own trees and Amazon, he has a massive land. He, there's nobody even passing by by the trees because it's all energy, right? So he will, his, he has his people who's been with him for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He collects the wines, he knows exactly, and they pray over it. They don't just, wow. <laughs> this is like super serious science down to the T. And it's so I'm exciting though it sound it really does sound like we're being given and conduit to directly speak to the mother earth um better and better yeah. people are becoming translators that can speak the earth language it's an amazing thing yes it's been around five thousand years mm -hmm. and someone told me once oh i heard that it kills brain cells i'm like if that was the case the indigenous world would not exist right now they would be dead by now this is how they communicate. They're so part of the nature. I'm so grateful that they finally decided to bring this to Westerners. It actually gives you access to a larger brain, which has unlimited number of cells, <laughs> right? So uh, there is so much more that you talk about on your channel and on Instagram. And it, what's really interesting is, is your, you, you um, advocate for the, the keto diet. And it's kind of what I do. Um, I'm never perfect. It's hard to do, but um, it, it has has that helped you out? And you you spent you so, dedicated a chapter to that. When when you have a new mind, a new heart, mm -hmm. so then you start taking care of your physical body because that's your vehicle. That's where your soul resides, and you want to make sure you're really fully functioning. So integration, the other fifty, is your physical body right. and your daily routines. So fasting is a massive medicine for people mm -hmm. who are dealing with chronic illness, again, cancer, blood pressure, diabetes, because when you fast, your body heals itself because you're giving your body a chance to stop digesting and let me take care of the, what it's needed. So right. if you're sitting in your home, this actually started with me when COVID started because we were just home and right. I was bored out of my mind and I started cleaning drawers that I haven't cleaned. I'm like, oh my God, I have a nail on the wall that I didn't even see for because I was so busy, busy living. Right. All of a sudden my house started looking good. Your body is the same. If you stop eating for 12 hours or 18 hours, now you gave your digestion system a little break and now mm -hmm. it can go to work and fix your kidney or fix your liver because when what happens is when you don't keep fueling the system you don't keep putting sugar carbs or any kind of food your liver needs to go to a reserve to make energy so you will go hunt because we are again five i mean millions of years old brain that we have that it's for our survival mm -hmm. When it goes to the reserve, it's going to use your reserved fat. And in those reserved fat, there are old cells that attach to emotions. So when you do this, you're also healing. It will leave your body. On mm -hmm. the third day of fasting, you may start crying, getting really irritated because you're cleaning your liver because every anger, every resentment usually stays there. Um, it's called autophagy. Your body mm -hmm. it basically said it eats itself, but you will be able to get rid of fat that it's been stuck for years. Oh my God, I can't get rid of my belly fat. Oh mm -hmm. my God, my legs are always like this. It's, I don't know what to do. Give yourself an intermittent um, fasting maybe twice a week. You know, start that way. It's not easy to just go cold turkey and not eat because your brain will win. It's such right. a programming. If you're eating at 11 every day, it's going to remind you and until you eat it won't stop right so it's you so have true. to change 
So in my book, I explain how you can get ready for fasting. What does fasting do? And keto diet that I like because it's natural. It's what it's found in the nature. Uh, I don't eat box food. Mm -hmm. I don't eat anything really made in the factories. You know, um, I'm not big on sugar. I was never, I mean, I'm lucky. I, I don't have a sweet tooth. But for women, it's different because we have our monthly cycle. We need some kind of sugar, carb, insulin, healthy yeah. carb, insulin for our brain to adjust to our hormone production so we can keep our monthly cycle. And for men too, it's good to break um, fasting or keto here and there because then their testosterone levels don't mess up. So they still keep loving, making love and all that stuff because it will change. Um, so everything in moderation. And I still love my fermented sourdough. I still mm -hmm. love my sushi. I'm not crazy strict with anything. I follow my body. I listen to my hunches. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly I, I follow a keto diet. I'm super clean eater. My children the same. Um, but my daughter loves carbs. And um, I was really upset with that first. Most parents are. I uh, when their kids eat junk food but I realized if I keep pushing she's gonna keep pushing back so as a mother as a parent to all the parents give them a little space to experience because they're gonna feel like shit they're gonna be like oh my, my mom was right but if I never let her experience it mm -hmm. she's gonna keep wanting the diet coke she never even drinks soda you know right. so it just habits it's being flexible with yourself, be easy, love yourself. It's the most important. Follow your hunches, access to your subconscious, meditate is the biggest and easiest tool that we have. Listen to amazing people like Neville Goddard, like Wayne Dyer, like Joe Dispenza. Like these people are trying to teach us all this stuff. I mean, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I always read books. I always listen to books. Um, be with people like you. I mean, your channel really helped me a lot and you have amazing meditations and you sound so good because it's so important because the sound will get you the 4D very fast. And I don't know how you do it, your voice, the way you talk. I think you hit the vibration. It just doesn't get me out of my meditation. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, well, thank you. I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan. So I me always- Me too. I love Tony Robbins yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a couple of his meditations too. I meditate every day, every day. And I decided I'm going to meditate when I want it. Because if someone tells me, oh, you have to do it right when you wake up. Well, I don't feel like it. Right. You know, as long as you get a 10, 15 minute meditation, you're a winner. You know, absolutely. 100%. So let me, I'm going to get an idea of your actual schedule. Let's pick a day when you decide to intermittent fast. I, and I want to, you know, if I want to, really get into how you're eating clean and meditating and how you're doing it you wake up in the morning we, we know that you spend an hour you you light some incense and then after that after that hour to yourself then tell me more uh, i have two children and uh, <laughs> 13 and 8 so i give myself an hour when i do intermittent fasting i stop eating the night before at 6 p.m mm -hmm. and i don't eat till next day 12 1 i don't really get hungry because i don't run on um insulin my fuel is fat. So I will have my bulletproof coffee every morning. Even mm -hmm. if I'm fasting for 10 days, I have my bulletproof coffee because bulletproof coffee doesn't get you out of the ketosis. Um, I don't use sugar. So that keeps me going till whenever time I am supposed to eat. And if I'm fasting for 24 hours, let's say, I will have a spoon of artisana coconut butter because as long as I keep my mitochondria happy, my brain thinks, Juliet is fine. She's not dying. She's not in the survival mode. So my mood will be good. I'm not feeling starvation. I can go. Uh, so after <clears throat> I have my coffee, I make breakfast for the children and, you know, they go to school. Then I have my work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I try not to book so much things online, like so many Zoom meetings and this and that, mm. uh, because I really, I don't like it. You know, and I learned to say no to things now. Um, and I listen to my body again. Like I, I rush things. If I'm, if I book myself three hour, let's say Zoom meeting, 
Mm -hmm. I realized that my third meeting, it, towards the end, I will be like, be irritated and I'll try to cut it off. So I don't want to get to that point. So I try to schedule myself or I give myself breaks um, in between. And then I do a lot of, I think, talks and promotions and organizing retreats. Now, actually, I am uh, planning to open up a bed and breakfast in Costa Rica. Oh. Uh, I'm building a center. <laughs> Uh, it will be small. It will be like a wellness center. It will be like biohack. It's actually science meets spirit, um, where you'll be able to get oxygen therapies, infrared sauna, IV drips, massages, Ayurveda. And then uh, I'm going to be holding retreats there. So it will be a lot of yoga, medicine, depends on what I have. Um, oh, wow. That sounds beach. amazing. It's happening because it's already done. <laughs> Oh, it's already done. It's done. That's and exciting. Sudden, Costa Rica is awesome too. All of a sudden, I just, this was always in my vision. I'm a visionary. Mm -hmm. uh, I called my friend who's an amazing real estate person in Costa Rica. I said, Heinz, this is what I want to do. Next day, he's like, here's your land. I found it. It just fall into his lap. Wow. Because it's already done. Now universe is just going to give it to me. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hustle bustle. No, not so at all. Right now, my most days goes uh, actually... Believe it or not, I'm already shopping for my sheets. How am I going to decorate? Because mm -hmm. it's already done, right? So I do a lot of daydreaming. <laughs> right. Imagination is the key. Absolutely. Uh, I'm already planning all my next year retreats, even though it's not going to be ready, you know, like realistically, realistically, it's not going to be ready for another year, but I don't care because right. that's not, how is not my problem? <laughs> people who are listening to this they're gonna think that i'm crazy you don't know not what crazy thinking. at all you don't know what i have in my life i have all this i always hear people you don't understand mm -hmm. i'm like dude i understand the most if i want to go to the victim party mm -hmm. i'm the biggest victim oh my god i'm a single mom single i don't have mom with two kids know, two kids i don't have this i'm an immigrant i you know like i can list your, that's my story. That's not my story anymore. That person died. Mm. You know, yeah. change your story, change your life. It's so true. We, we are telling ourselves a story mm. all the time where it, in most of the cases, it's it, the story. If we could just change that story, because how many times do you take actions for the people out there watching? How many times do you do something or go do something because of the story of your mind? So yeah, how many times do you just find yourself just going and doing something because the story that you've told yourself, we all have that story that I'm, I'm the single father. I'm, the, I'm the, the, with the family of five. I, I'm an engineer and that's what I'm meant to be. Right. When well, deep I'm inside sad. of us, I'm skinny, I'm, I'm exactly, I'm or I mean, I'm an immigrant. There's all, but right. if you notice all the stories are limitations. Nobody, even, nobody all the ever stories. says, Oh, I'm so abundant. Right. Oh, I have a great family. You never hear about that. You always hear about stories, the victim, victim stories. Mm -hmm. I stopped that. I was doing the same. It's but such I a common thing. Yeah. And yeah. it's amazing yeah. that you had that realization. I've, seen, I've met people that have come to me for help. And, you know, if I could just tell them, get them to change their story, but they will not change their story because I'm the fat, I'm the fat, dumb person that's always going to be poor. That's what they'll say to themselves. And uh, it's really the story. It's nothing else. It's more than just the subconscious, right? I say, so. like, I use the word stubborn. I said I'm stubborn right. to you on this talk. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep it. That's your story. You're stubborn, right? I'm stubborn. <laughs> and because that got me a lot where I wanted, like, I'm stubborn. I keep on with my projects. Right. I don't give up. I don't take no for an answer. That's a good quality. But it sounds negative, right? It does, but it's not. It's it's been to your benefit. It depends on your perspective. Lovingly stubborn, right? Yes. <laughs> Accepting also who you are. Oh, right. I'm a Capricorn. That's how I'm made. Fuck that. No. Yeah. That's what you want it to believe that it's okay. Right. Well, let me ask you what your perspective is. Do you think that I, I meet people that are very much into astrology and you know, I'm a Leo. 
and, and, and they'll say, and, and they, and they really use that to almost shape and craft their identity. And we were just talking about creating our reality. Can that stuff create your reality um, inadvertently? Uh, even if it's true, if there's truth in, in, in all of the stuff with astrology, do you think that you can still go beyond it and you can overcome it, right? W what is your belief, how we should treat that information? Um, I, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Cap Sag. I know everything about my sign, but right. this is what I learned. There's sun energy, there's moon energy. Sun is our masculine, moon is the feminine. Mm -hmm. There are 13 moons in the year and woman bleeds 13 times a year. Uh, one of the moon is the blue moon when there's two full moon in one month. Every year we get one, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, we are affected because we're affected by the water mm -hmm. and the moon, the sun, it's all the vibration and how open you are and how susceptible you are. You're going to feel it deeper or you're going to feel it less. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to how awake you are, how conscious you are, how much you are in your body or how much you are in your mind. So it's a tool. If you know that there's full moon and you need to be aware that energy can be stressful that month, let's say, Take it easy. Right. It's a tool. It's not, it's not a map for me. Everything right. is a tool. You know. Use it as a tool, not as a way to define your reality. No. It's okay. Everything. Plant medicine is a tool. Everything is a tool. Everything is a tool. Now, one of the things you mentioned in your book that I loved is um, that we're all one and that you love everyone, but it was hard for you to come to that. To, to that knowledge and understanding that that everyone is you and that you love everyone so i wanted to get more from you where you, you had a bit understanding of this this concept and idea that, very hard for me to accept that yeah um hard for me <laughs> i agree if, if we are all one you are a soul residing in that body right mm -hmm. and we are all made with love vibration the universe is love vibration and we come from nothing we go to nothing it's void it's zero point mm -hmm. is that your soul when you meet your soul this is happens uh when you drink medicine because you see what's up <laughs> right and when you wake up in the morning you you will love everything and everyone because it's you looking at you mm -hmm. So you stop judging. Everyone has their own story. I used to not talk to my mom when um, there was like a political disagreement, you know, we didn't agree on stuff like that. And I judged her. I'm like, I cannot believe you voting for him. But I didn't understand where she was coming from. But the minute I actually said, let me hear her why, mm -hmm and put yourself in her shoes and all of a sudden there was a shift and i said okay what is she triggering in me why am i not disagree agreeing with her or why am i getting upset just because she picked their different it's always about me mm -hmm. you're saying no to something that i don't like because you're not obeying me because you're not pleasing me because that's not what I need. When you change from I to we, everything changes. Yeah, very profound. So no, I... it changed my relationship with my daughter. I have a very strong daughter. My son mm -hmm. is the easiest kid on the planet. My daughter is the sweetest, biggest heart, stubborn, like mama, <laughs> don't take no for an answer. And she gives me my own medicine. And I'm like, who am I to tell her what to do? Mm -hmm. But before I was not like that. I'm your mother. I'm the boss. You're going to do what I say. She's like, no. <laughs> and if it wasn't my daughter, I would never talk to her again. Right. <clears throat> Since I can't get rid of her, I had to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> you still saw yourself in her though, right? Because she, everybody is your mirror. Mm -hmm. If you are a mean person, you're going to meet a ton of mean people. 
because you get what you are, you don't get what you want. So true. So we're just walking around looking at mirror versions of ourselves and our family and everything. It's uh, interesting, but still it's really, uh, it's a wonderful realization because you can always change what you see in the mirror. You know, it's- uh, Also, if you see, if someone that hurt you and you're upset with that person, go back and see why you're upset. Mm -hmm. Then you will find the main cause because like in functional medicine, what's the main cause of your anger? God mm -hmm. knows what your parents did to you. Or maybe in high school, you got dumped by a girl that you were in love with and then you are now damaged, good. You were gonna take it. The next person said something wrong or look at you wrong way. Now you hate that person. It's never them. It's always you. It's always so everyone you. is medicine. Every day is medicine. We are in ceremony every day in our lives. Wow. I love that. Everyone is medicine. Yeah. Every day is a ceremony. So Juliet, this, this has been so much fun and there's so much more we can talk about from the book. So we'll have to talk again. And I, I I, <laughs> I've learned a lot from Paul and Instagram. And one thing I, I use Guy um, on my lips. Yep. I think that you had said that once. I was like, wow, that works great. <laughs> and if it's, uh, if it's still not going, put it in your belly button. I, I, I put it in my belly button and from your recommendation. You can follow these tips. Juliet is on Instagram every day and on a regular basis. At least. Not, yeah, not every day. And yeah. she and, and she's giving recommendations, stuff that's really good. So um, and there's oh, so I recommend okay. getting the book Medicine Modern Medicine Woman on by Amazon. Juliet Byrne on Amazon. I'll have the link in the description. I absolutely recommend it. It's got pictures, it's really well published, it looks great. I think you're gonna love it. And uh, so it triggered a lot of people because uh, yeah. I'm talking about medicine and then I have a picture with bikini. <laughs> well, and and I, I did that it on purpose. But you're, you, it shows that you're healthy and happy and you're reflecting what you're talking about in the book that yeah. you, you can see in the pictures that you came. It's, it's proof is in the pudding, right? You, yes, um, also, when I'm in the jungle, they call me the jungle Barbie because when I'm there, I'm <laughs> just like I have my lashes on. I have many pity. I have spray tan. I do it for me. And if it bothers you, OK, you need to look into your insecurities. Why right. am I why am I triggering you? The jungle Barbie. Yeah, that's my nickname. I, I like something with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm probably going to text you to get some information about the retreat in December, because that sounds really fascinating. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real honor. Thank and you. Um, everybody check out Juliet's book and welcome to the reality revolution. Oh, my God, this is so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.